They're both big, both powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, both have triple camera systems and both cost about the same. So which should you pick? The newest Zenfone 11 Ultra or the OnePlus 12? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint, and in this video, I'll tell you. Every phone experience starts when you first pick it up and hold it in your hand. And even if you were to do so with your eyes closed, the difference between these two phones is obvious to the senses. Both are large phones, similar in size and weight, but the shaping and build makes them a very different experience to each other. Where OnePlus has generous curves towards the sides on the front and the back, the ASUS has a lot more flat and square edges. It still has some very subtle curving at the edges to ensure it's not completely right angled and sharp, and that ensures it's not entirely uncomfortable. Still, it's a big phone that requires considerable stretching to use one-handed, where OnePlus has tried to make the phone feel smaller than it is using that curved glass. Durability-wise, the thicker metal around the middle of the ASUS does give the phone a bit more of a rigid feel, like it would be harder to bend. It's also got a higher water and dust resistance rating, specifically we're talking IP68, which means it's certified for submersion, where OnePlus's IP65 means it's only certified for rain and splashes. However, you should find in most common water-related accidents, i.e. getting caught in the rain or dropping them in a sink full of water, you should be okay with either. It's just the ASUS will do better if it's held underwater for a prolonged period. But as for looks, well, I, I think they're both something of an acquired taste. I'm not sure I like the square protruding camera island on the ASUS, almost like it's just been stamped on without any thought or intention. It's just there, whether you like it or not. The larger, rounder camera unit on the OnePlus definitely feels more purposeful, with the polished background wrapping around the edge of the phone to blend in with the shiny midframe. There are a couple of other small physical components worth mentioning, however. One of those is the Zenfone's 3.5mm audio port. It's one of only a very select number of flagship phones that has support for traditional wired connections that doesn't require you to use a USB-C dongle or adapter. So if you're into wired, analog headphones, this is the one. The other is the internal vibration motor. OnePlus's haptic engine that offers feedback when you tap and use the screen is just a lot more subtle and precise. It's a delight. So let's talk displays because there are similarities and differences here. For instance, both have near enough 6.8 inch panels. Asus is 6.78, OnePlus is 6.82. One is flat, the other is curved. And when it comes to watching videos or just using the phone, I have to say I find the flat display is generally better. I didn't get as many accidental touch issues and found it easier to type on the keyboard without the curves at the edges making it hard to quickly type on the outside letters. Both have in-display fingerprint sensors too and I found when it came to those the ASUS was faster to recognize and unlock and also less likely to fail at reading. But as for the actual display quality there are real strengths to both. For instance they can reach high levels of brightness. In fact when measuring brightness across the entire panel in high brightness mode they'll both hit a peak of around 1600 nits which means they're comparable when it comes to viewing them outside in bright daylight. Both are similar when it comes to refresh rates too, offering adaptive rates between 1 and 120 hertz. So when it comes to actual experience of swiping, tapping and using the display, I saw similar levels of smoothness from both panels. Where the OnePlus has an edge is sharpness. It's a Quad HD panel which, when enabled, means you just see a little bit more crispness and smoothness to the edges of small details like texts or the round edges of icons and shapes. As for the rest of the multimedia experience though, the larger, powerful speakers on either side of the ASUS mean it is a better phone for audio. It just gave that bit more of an immersive feel when I was watching movies or gaming, where the OnePlus didn't quite have that, but still has stereo speakers. Now, performance comparisons are pretty difficult when you're looking at two phones powered by largely the same hardware. So the differences between them are really minimal and for most people, probably unnoticeable because they're both Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, both available with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's LPDDR5X RAM 2, plus the storage is UFS 4.0. And what all of that essentially means is each part of the hardware is about as fast and powerful as you can expect. So whichever phone I was using, I found that it could tackle the most demanding games and apps without any trouble, lag or frame dropping. It was a similar story when trying to compare battery life as well because they both have big batteries and they're both among the best that I've used in a long time. We've now got to the point with these big powerful flagships that they can be two day batteries for people who aren't especially demanding users. People like me, for instance, who use about two or three hours of screen time a day, usually split between casual social media browsing, video, reading sports and news, plus a spot of gaming thrown in the mix. For me, both of these can make it to the end of a second day. For heavy users, and you'll find that a full day is more than doable from either. As for refilling, only the OnePlus comes with a charger in the box, and that charger uses 100 watt speeds to completely refill an empty battery in less than half an hour. 
The Zenfone has the ability to charge at 66 watts, which takes about 39 minutes. But to take advantage, you do need to buy a compatible power delivery or PPS charger, which means you've got an extra cost to consider. But otherwise, when it comes to performance and battery life, I found it really difficult to separate these two phones. So let's move on to one area where there is a difference. So despite both phones having a triple camera system made up of an ultra wide, a primary and a zoom, that's about where the similarity ends because with all three cameras, the OnePlus seems to be the much better tool for both photography and video capture. Most of that has to do with the processing of still images in terms of the details shown in photos, as well as the colors, the contrast and the light. The best way to describe the difference is that ASUS, regardless of which of the cameras was being used or the conditions, the photos came out looking darker, grainier, lacking some of the nuance in color. So although it has a strong main camera hardware wise, the actual processing of that image leaves the picture often feeling a bit crushed and dim. Darker areas in images tend to get really darkened. And so you'll find, especially when you zoom in, that some of the color present in the brickwork on this church, for example, or in the windows is lost. And the other benefit of the OnePlus is that the zoom can go further without losing too much in the way of quality. Using at six times zoom, you can still get pictures with good detail, light, color, and texture, where the ASUS starts to fall away a bit once you push past the optical three times. Another thing I noticed was that the ASUS zoom camera wasn't great for objects close up. So if you want to use the zoom for macro type shots of small flowers, for instance, the OnePlus lets you get closer into the frame and offers quite a nice looking natural bokeh or background blur at the same time. At night, using the dedicated night mode ability on both cameras, there's a similar difference when looking at results again, leaving me convinced that the OnePlus is the better system. And again, because of how colors, detail and light are processed. There's a greenish tint to a lot of the photos from ASUS and it cleans up the white balance a bit too much compared to the warmer, more natural approach from the OnePlus. And the images just have a rougher overall finish, sometimes struggling with focus and giving some motion blur. But in the end, a lot of the details just don't seem as sharp. And the textures sometimes take on quite an unusual look with a combination of smoothing and over sharpening. It's not all negative though from the ASUS. The stabilization on the main camera is really good, particularly when it comes to shooting handheld video. The results are smoother when moving compared to the OnePlus, and it seems to deliver slightly better color and light balance than the OnePlus does, not overexposing highlights and keeping things looking natural and realistic. Now, in the end, when comparing these two big powerful devices, there was only the one area that really stood out to me as the point of difference, and that was cameras. A lot of the other aspects were divided by only small margins, but the photography and processing in the camera department, I think, are much stronger in the OnePlus phone. Where the ASUS has an advantage is in durability and build, the higher water and dust resistance, and the fact that if you want, you can have all this flagship power and still use a pair of wired headphones if you want to. Plus it has a flat display and for some that's more preferable than a curved one. Still, as a complete package for similar money, I think OnePlus has made a package that's better for more people. What do you think? Let me know in the comments or you can get me on threads, I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap that notification bell and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.